Hell raisers turn to ban. Energies <laughs> turn to pick. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to OG versus Hellraisers as we get into the thick of things here in Group B action for the International 2017. I'm LD. I'll be joined here by Luminous. OG currently sitting 4 and 2 in a pretty good position. Ten seconds remaining. One one, so I, I guess maybe Liquipedia was wrong, but in any case, looks like they are gonna be. What are you doing, Lumi? You are way too loud. You're. I'm way too loud for you. Uh, well, you can turn this down. That that is what they hear. Don't touch that. Yeah. Okay. I put it back. I put it back. Yeah. This is this is you. Yeah. Okay. It's your in ears. Let me let me go more. Why why are you so so loud? Oh, maybe it's this one. We're just turning all the knobs does over. That, does that help? <laughs> that helps a lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that, folks. Just getting the audio sorted out. But uh, yeah, Lumi, it's OG versus Hellraisers. Uh, I guess like repeaters are on, so Hellraisers is one and three. OG is four and two in Group B. So OG looking solid, but certainly not insurmountable as of yet. Uh, with potentially a lot at stake here. You take a couple games off OG and your Hellraisers, all of a sudden you are in the thick of things for top four. You get two mode in this series. Now you got a tall mountain to climb to even, you know, get to the main event at all, let alone in the winner's bracket. So a lot at stake. Yeah, for OG fans, this is reasonably the two, uh, the team that you should 2-0. Um, you should move on, get the quick win. But I think for Hellraisers, they are going to be coming in prepared. I think it's much easier to prepare for a team like OG. You see them play against a whole bunch of different style, a lot of tough opponents, and a lot of uh, losses as well. And you could kind of learn, perhaps. But I guess unless Hellraiser surprises, I, I, I kind of expect OG to kill them with their standard playstyle. Yeah, I think that's fair. OG certainly come in as favorites to this one. So looking at the draft, we'll try and break it down a little bit for you guys now. First overall pick went to OG. They removed the Batrider and the Lycan. Uh, Lycan has certainly seen a resurgence the last few months. And obviously Liquid, uh, one of the teams that loves to run him as well. Had some success earlier in the tournament with the Zoo Strat we saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to instead open things up with the Nyx Assassin first overall. Hellraisers removing those big map controllers, uh, kind of tempo setters with the Earth Spirit, the Night Stalker, the Roaming Four positions. They go Clock, Ancient Apparition. Um, and now we see the Phoenix. Of course, this is a fly signature. And I mean, I, I would say best Phoenix in the world, personally. He plays it a lot more than most other supports, and he's very confident on the hero. I think in the Western scene, I definitely agree with you there. Uh, some of the Chinese Phoenix are quite good as well, although the hero has been definitely out of their meta for, for a while as well. We're going to see Ancient Apparition once again, and uh, the question is always, you know, Clockwork support or is it a... Uh, is it a Offlane. We saw 33 today do some amazing thing against Execration early on today. Was not able to win the game off the, the big clockwork performance, but damn, it, it looked really, really insane. He was able to like get solo kills in, in 1v2 situations, got his level 6 very quickly, and then dominated the game. Yeah, 33 might have had the best clockwork performance I've I've seen in, in months, honestly. Like, yeah. I've seen a lot of solid clockworks, but he almost carried the team, and that's really not something you say often about that hero. Uh, he's much more of a, a part of the supporting cast for most players. Tell Razor's showing Miracle the respect. They are going to... I'm sorry, why am I saying Miracle? Um, showing uh, <laughs> Ana the respect. Uh, Betting out the Invoker. I, was just, I saw Miracle's Invoker the other day. It was absolutely yep. godly. So I, I would just, not... I see Invoker. Yeah. I think Miracle. It is OG. But yeah, welcome to 2017, guys. Where, uh, of course, uh, it's more the Ana Invoker. But yeah, they're also going to remove the Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage has been kind of making his way back into the meta a little bit. I know there's this like hard carry mid thing that, you know, EG completely airballed yesterday, but uh, also rumor is Liquid has been doing that a lot as well. You know, we saw the Sumail Void mid. Uh, apparently they've been running some hard carries mid too. So. I wonder if they're thinking about picking up certain uh, carries that are going to be good, uh, or sorry, rather weak against anti-mage. So think of things like Necrofalls or stuff like that. Although with that said, I'm not sure if you want to pick Necrofalls into a Nyx Assassin. <laughs> 
as Nyx is generally seen as one of the hard counters. We're gonna see the Shaker picked up here. So, so you got the 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 question in the air: Who is the off lane? Who is the support? I'm leaning more with the Shaker off lane. This is actually one of 33's most play hero, one of his best heroes. So I'm I'm gonna lean towards ES off lane, Clockwork support, and that certainly will help OG plan out their the rest of the picks. Yeah, another hero that isn't doesn't love playing against Nyx though. I I think. Nyx also can make Earth Shaker's life very difficult with the Carapace, easily interrupting his big combo mm. if he gets off the Carapace. So, of the late game Shakers we have seen will build BKB, at which point the Nyx doesn't really pose as much of a threat, but you know, that is, of course, far down the road. Oh, gee, they'll grab their carry now. It is the Phantom Lancer. So, PL mid used to be probably the most popular way to play, and we saw the, the PL Coddle era. Uh, where do you expect OG is going to run the PL, and who's going to be playing it? Most likely going to be no tells here, uh, and he shows really a wide range of what this hero is capable of. I think w we expect PL to be more of a traditional one position carry, but the way that I've seen no tell play, he is a lot more sacrificial. Like he, he could actually pick up things like drums, even things like SMY, just play him more like a two almost, and then allow Ana to be kind of the, the heavy farmer and, and carry from the mid lane. Do you worry at all about picking? PL into ES. Ah, that uh, that's kind of like the classic counter. He's that's the it. old school. Yeah, you got a bunch of illusions. Here comes Shaker with this big echo slam. Honestly, hey, buddy. I, I I don't think I'm too worried because most good P PL players are, are good at taking care of his illusions and whatnot. And No Tail is definitely one of them. Um, but it's definitely a point that Hellraiser can exploit. Uh, I I would be more scared of a long range fissure into an ice blast. That's definitely something that Hellraiser will look to set up. Uh, on, on PL as well as on the remainder of the heroes. There was a period where the favored PL build, uh, I think especially in China, I want to say it was Aggressive who really pioneered this build, was the combat PL build where you'd mm -hmm. get like a BKB and Abyssal Blade rather than just trying to get pure stats items. Yeah. Um, and I think that is potentially a great option against an AAES if you're concerned about that sort of thing. Yeah, it just comes down to the uh, playstyle that you want, right? That build takes a little bit more farming time, which I think no tell generally uh, instead of farming, he, he likes to fight for the team. Oh, uh, wombo combo. Here we go. Enigma picked up. There is a hook shot to try and interrupt this, but there's not a whole lot of BKB piercing disable yep. to work with here. At the same time, it's going to take a while for Enigma to get to the BKB. I'm assuming this is a position 3 Enigma, which in which case it'll like to go for things like Midas, uh, Arcane, Blink, and then you're thinking about BKB, but at that point, you know, there's three or four team fights that have gone by where Shaker is a good disable, Clockwork is a good disable, and uh, of course, whatever else that is uh, left for the mid to be picked up. Fifth and final ban now for OG. Hellraiser's removed the TA. I asked you last series, uh, what happened to TA? And she's largely been, I don't think she's been picked or banned in any of the games that we've cast. Uh, she definitely uh, hasn't been picked or banned in any other games I watched. So she's been relatively ignored, all things considered. Uh, even though, go back two months ago, TA was probably the mid. Yeah. Anything in particular? Do You, you mentioned, I think, that DOT. picks like Venomancer yep. have come back. Uh, and that's discouraging some of the TA picks. Obviously, AA, I guess, gives you some damage over time as well. But are you surprised to see the, the lack of TA? It could be one of those things that the teams that we've been casting have been preferring the other type of mids. Uh, the mids overall has... We've seen uh, the resurgence of things like Lina, Queen of Pain coming back, Puck coming in really big for a lot of the top teams, kind of crowding out the slot for TA. But I think TA is still definitely one of, one of the strong picks. She can snowball so fast. You stack Ancient a couple of times, and she can be the most farm hero 15 minutes in a game, and that's definitely a very dangerous weapon. Hellraiser feels so, and they do take it out. We're going to see Nursa. All right, this is as combat heavy as as it gets. So now with the Ursa as a core position, we might see the PL now going back more for the traditional role where he you know farms a little bit more. Might be even going for more of the BOP. BLT build that you suggested, because Ursa is going to be the one that's going to be leading the fights. Ursa, obviously, fantastic against a lot of these heroes. Doesn't care if he gets cogged. In fact, that's great. That's just a free kill on the clockwork. Uh, at the same time, the cogs can disrupt him in the fights. Lifestealer, obviously, he wins that man fight. He gives them some great Roche taking potential, which 
Really, they only had Enigma. He's decent, uh, but not not the old Enigma who could just go and solo rush super early on his own, uh, and also difficult to get away with that nowadays. So, um, I think this gives them some good objective taking potential and kind of balances the lineup. And Hellraisers, hey. it is the Clock Shadow Fiend. You know, we mentioned this was where Clock really started to come back, was specifically that combo for the early souls. Now people just like Clockwork for the hero itself, but this is some extra added synergy. Let's see how many souls he's going to get. Yeah, of course, you're going to have the advantage matchup in the mid lane. Like, regardless whether he's getting souls or not, I think Ana is going to be disadvantaged to, to begin with. A very common thing that teams have been doing whenever they go up against the Clockwork Shadow Fiend is that you get a level 1 smoke and you, you get a gank off against Shadow Fiend, whether it's at the rune spot or whether it's, you know, after he picks up the rune and then you just wrap around the mid lane. As you know, if you get the Shadow Fiend killed, then he loses half of his soul and all of that hard work you've done to actually acquire that soul for the Shadow Fiend is now kind of gone out the window. Unfortunately for uh, OG, I just don't think their heroes are too amazing for that level 1 gank, right? We're looking at a, what, a Icarus dive and an Impale? That might be enough depending, you know... I think Ursa's Ursa is, like yeah. hitting someone the whole time. Depending if Ursa has the boots as well, that, that might be... Maybe he picks up an Orb of Venom for that gank? We'll, we'll see how things go, but... Some teams are expecting that level 1 smoke gank for their Shadow Fiend as well. And they protect their Shadow Fiend. There's definitely a, a big mind game thing. Uh, whether you even go for the shadow, uh, uh, the uh, smoke gank in the first place. So we'll see how things go. Yeah, generally, I, I would say in agreement with you that most teams have gotten very disciplined about protecting the SF to ensure that he doesn't lose those early souls, even sometimes sacrificing those early lanes or, you know, their early creep blocks just to ensure that they get it off. But uh, we will see Kaiser off to a nice start here as far as the souls go. Elsewhere, other heroes deploying. Jarex does get a good hill ward down in the mid lane. He starts with the boots. And no boots on J4, so he's going to take quite a bit of early harass as he retreats towards the safety of the mid lane. So as far as overall laning setup, it looks like just pretty standard for HR, the Shadow Fiend mid, the safe lane lifestealer. And as far as the lifestealer goes, Lumi, not really the best vehicles, like just the clockwork and that's it. Maybe Shadow Fiend if he gets a Shadow Blade or Blink, but that also puts your SF in... You know, harm's way for things like an Ursa to go and maul him, potentially a black hole to come through. And OG are making that smoke play that you mentioned, but J4 is there. Well, he can break the smoke. He also is likely to give up a first blood. Gets clipped by the Impale after the land setup from No Tail. Now Hawks. the dogs come in, but they also kind of push J4 away from the safer path down the cliff. I think he was dead anyway, unless they pushed all four of OG and blocked them off completely, but... It is a first blood to OG, at least not on the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, and the fact that they got their uh, first blood so close to the rune spawn will guarantee the rune uh, on three of them, at least. OG Ana will pick it up and just walks towards mid. He, his uh, Jerax is going to help him block the mid lane a little bit, so uh, they're it's, getting everything. It actually is quite big that the Ursa is the one that gets the, the first blood there as well. Mm. It's going to mean early extra regen for him. You'll probably get your boots a bit sooner. Uh, and potentially even it's be coming right now. and yeah let's see okay he did go boots first so yeah yep. with the boots like sh you look at the base move speed of Ursa it's already bigger than better than Shadow Fiends and now you've got the boots as well so you could definitely run him down if he gets remotely sloppy perhaps we'll see the Nyx come in for an early gank uh, I definitely think the clock needs to just stay camped around mid lane for now he disagrees he's gonna just walk away from his Shadow Fiend and go up top Maybe Kaiser just feels confident, despite the fact that he, he knows that Ursa is going to have a movement speed advantage. He's going to basically play stay away and, and race and, and just stack for himself and stuff like that. If you like see the clockwork top and you have a, a smoke on Jerax, you're definitely making that move mid. Uh, for now, there is a Radiant Ward scouting him. Uh, he'll probably figure it out soon. His sentry just out of range, so this will not be the easiest approach. But once he identifies that there is a ward, perhaps he approaches from the south. Yep. Perhaps he goes with a smoke next time. So, For the clock, even if he's not mid, it's also like, just don't show yourself in other lanes. That uh -oh. way they at least worry about it. Ana getting pushed back by two cogs. A lot of mana gone, but it's okay. It, it's really tough when the, the creep wave is where it is right now. It kind of pushed in. Kaiser doesn't have the protection of the tower where he has to be very careful. You can see Ana, he doesn't mind taking a hit or two. As long as he, he could pressure Shadow Fiend away from the creep wave, but ever, uh, you know, you give this lane one more minute, and I think Kaiser gets to level four, he gets that se second point of Necromastery, 
I think that's where he will really take over the lane. So far, he's been playing beautifully. Yeah, Ursa's definitely not going to win this matchup on his own once the he, Shadow he Fiend kills. has his farm. But yeah. if he gets the gank, like PL could come into the lane. Maybe we see a smoke with the Enigma at some point. Uh, the Nyx alone might be able to do it. And I, just like I mentioned, Jerex is going to try that southern approach. And I think he might have more success here, though, with Milan in the lane. He'll have to wait until he sees him rotate around. Yep. Sentry gets dropped. We'll see the dire sentry, but no ward yet. This is an opening. Like, if that clock heads top, like he's sort of looking like he might do now, they could potentially cinch the noose mid. Well, Kaiser just picked up Boots of Speed, so that makes the kill a little bit harder. A couple illusions hanging out with him as well. And he swings on the back line, so I think Kaiser is going to be fine. You're right, like, oh, 33! <laughs> Well, I went burning. for the full swoop in. Yeah, he's got a south. He'll be fine. Yeah, he who's like fissure, 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 fissure. <laughs> Wait, kept they, on going. They don't see Jerax in the trees. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. All right. He's he's a sneaky little bugger, and this could really be the opening. They're gonna he's gonna pop out in just a second. Sneaky, sneaky Jerax. Although if he waits too long, now the clock is gonna be back in the lane, and it's right when they try to make the roof. Oh, Jerax. He, he thinks twice about it. They're like, let's get the clockwork instead. This is the much easier kill, but got to be careful. Kaiser's not just doing whatever he wants with these raises. Even the courier arriving to make some item deliveries in the midst of it, and then Fly TP's in. That's the oh. plus one advantage. Give them two kills, and the Shadow Fiend down. I think he did spend his gold at least, but still costly. Yeah, I think that was a little bit sloppy here for Hellraisers. I, I think as soon as they realize that Jirax is behind them, they just have to give up the kill. Um, it's too risky, and, and Kaiser could have fairy fire, I think, to survive. He definitely had way more regen, uh, could have easily survived that engagement and just stay in the lane, but I guess a little bit too worried about spending his remainder gold. And as a result, I guess uh, the lane did what it's supposed to do, right? Kill Shadow Fiend at least once. And... Yeah, once is, is once enough. You know, I feel like Shadow Fiend will, he's already got 32 CS. You know, he's still farming very well. Obviously, stack Dota isn't quite what it used to be with the reduced uh, bounty you get, but nonetheless, it's still pretty good. So. I mean, more is always better, but the fact that Milan has been basically... It's basically a 2v1 lane for, for the most part, and you're still getting a kill on it. Uh, I guess 2v2 is more fair because Jirax also spent... Hey, that was a 3v2, time. Lumi. They even had made the Phoenix TP in. So. That is true. <laughs> Although, only momentarily. Jirax invis up, sitting right next to 33. Doesn't have the damage to him on his own, I don't think, but with a plus one, maybe. And while Milan comes in, he's going to cage the bear with the cold feet coming through. Double raise, push back. Oh, it's going to proc, and that is the last hit for Kaiser. So topped out in the Souls department again. Looking good for Hellraiser's there, though they're down one to three. It's a very mild lead for OG, at least so far. Yep. My uh, my big curiosity is what item Kaiser is going to end up getting. Uh, we do see Shadow Blade being a very popular choice, or we're going to see more traditional like Dragon Lance into Pike and right click away. I definitely see merits for both builds. Uh, it could come down to player preference. Bottom lane, Swift ending has a lot of Eidolons on him, and S4 kind of uh, traversing between lane and jungle. Pulls Meanwhile, ahead. diving 33 up top does have the Enchant Totem, but that's about it. This is going to force reaction from Milan as he TPs in, and that might open things up on the mid lane. Let's see if they can find the opportunity there. Fly was sweeping in. Plants it down an Observer Ward. It is still in range of a Sentry. In fact, that Sentry dewarded at other, another and, ward there. In so. fact, I believe that... Uh, did they step all the way in the Roche Pit? I didn't actually catch it. Um, they might not have been scouted on this smoke, but now they're revealed. With the Obs, I think Kaiser gets out of there. So Hellraiser's Winning this ward game, OG already missed the D ward once. Uh, then they plant their own OBS right down, and that gets quickly dealt with. Yeah, a little bit of, I guess, communication error there. Also, very unfortunate timing for OG for going for that gank, because Shadow Fiend was going to just double raise that wave regardless. And The yeah. Shadow Fiend is pretty out of control, man. He's a thousand gold up to Look at his CS differential on the mid lane. He's doubling on the CS. I mean, some of that is... You know. It's supposed to happen, right? Yeah. Like, unless they kill him two, three times, or Ursa has a, like, say, a phase boots to boots advantage, like, there's no way that Ursa's actually going to win that lane. Not with the help of Shadow Fiend got. I mean, they had the last pick on the Ursa, right? So... Oh, no, it was Shadow Fiend ultimately the last pick of the whole draft, right? Um, yeah, I believe it was Shadow Fiend last Okay, pick. okay. 
Yeah, because they picked Ursa and then they went into Dance. Right. Well, Ursa is going to have a different 1v1 matchup. Milan's going to take over lane now. Shadow Fiend is comfortably ahead in terms of experience. And we'll just jungle a little bit. It's like a super stack. You know, sometimes you look at a game with the Shadow Fiend, you're like, this is, you know, not the easiest Shadow Fiend game. Does this game feel like a game where guys can just take over completely? Are there any matchups that you worry about? I, I don't think so. 33, by the way, in a lot of trouble. Phoenix Scythe comes in. I think he's going to just go down. Try, no tail. Try, try. <laughs> Doing a little bit of circular dance for, for whatever reason. We'll pick up the kill. Um, there are a lot of things that will he has to worry about. For example, Requiem is going to get easily spiked to set up a stun on him. There isn't any solo kill opportunity. A lot of times you pick up a Shadow Blade and you can pick, like, let's say, a Avenge kill or a Witch Doctor kill for free. The Phoenix, even, you have to work for because he could dive away an egg, for example. So, to answer your question, I don't think there is a lot of freebie for Kaiser and he needs to itemize very hard. He, he definitely needs BKB, he definitely needs some sort of physical survivability as well. And also, itemizing against PL is always a nightmare for a lot of these range cores. He's really the only one who can kill the egg. Also, I mean, AA is yeah. not like to be doing much auto attacking, so I think he probably does need that dragon uh, dance. And, and ideally, a decent amount of attack speed. So, yeah, I guess he needs a lot of items in that sense. Yeah. He has a lot of roles and uh, responsibility on him. So, even though he's doing quite well right now, he needs to be doing really well. Here comes Ana. There is an infest available, but he's just going to try to hoof it out of there. And that is not happening. Swift ending quickly deleted. So now HR will group up mid. Milan continuing to bodyguard his buddy. Fly will tank up a rocket. Well, on his way to level six here, so doing pretty good in that experience department. The egg is coming soon. Other than that, no. Ana. Major key levels is on it. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, sure. A little honey trip there. SMY here coming out here from Kaiser. I don't think I remember the last I've seen this. This is definitely like something out of a Dota 1 fairy book, fairy tale. Who, who goes to SMY first nowadays? Oh, Shadow. Mm. Yeah, it's a well, for now, I, I guess just the Sanj. You know, does he actually commit for the full SMI? We'll see. We'll see. Yasha first is always considered as like a good stat farming item. A little bit of everything. Oh, it is, okay. He already has the Yasha. So yeah, it is, yeah. It is looking like SMI. I guess Manta is okay this game. It's not amazing. It's not an item that you want to rush for. That's for sure. Well, can you man? You can Manta off like the Ursa clap, I guess. Yeah, or that's about it. Malefic. Top as uh, 33 gets jumped on. I actually don't think Shadow Fiend is going to be the X Factor, despite how how much he's getting and how well he's playing. So to me, it's going to be the Shaker, because Shaker is going to be the one that, let's say, he gets an early blink that he's setting up gank across the map. Shadow Fiend on his own won't be able to get kills, but if Shaker comes in, they get a kill, and then Shadow Fiend just pushes. That that's going to be the, the the easy one to punch to get some objectives. So Lumi, uh, with a bit of a lull here, score only 1 to 5, 10 minutes in. OG have a moderate advantage, about 2k gold. Uh, overall thoughts on the two teams' lineups and what their strategies will be moving forward? How do you see them stacking up? I think OG scales much better in the late game. You know, you're looking at Phoenix with amazing talents as he gets levels. Uh, same thing with the uh, Enigma. Man, once Enigma gets to 15 and he has Midas, he is going to go ham. So to me, it's going to be up to Hellraiser to kind of close out this game around 25 to 40 minute mark. I think OG is very comfortable going like this by having a hero like Ursa, because all of the other heroes scale amazingly. And, you know, the, for, for the majority of the game, it's both teams kind of controlling the tempo. We're going to have OG starting right now. Uh, S4 committing the black hole here bottom, but his team not cooperating. They wanted to smoke on mid, where Milan is there to meet them and try and shut things down. He's got the cogs. He will pull in two, potentially saving Kaiser in the process. So a black hole blown in a one for two exchange around the map. Not too shabby for OG, I guess, when you look at it that way, but could have gotten the two kills and not used the black hole. So do they take an objective now? That's the question. I'll work on this tower mid. DP comes in at the shrine. Milan looking to muster the defense. He is one creep away from level six. So no hook shot available for this upcoming fight yet. The glyph gets deployed. Ice blast online. So they can hook into an ice blast here. Something OG have to respect. The egg is available to reset the fight, obviously. No tail will prove elusive on the PL. 
flanking around Azada. Bear wants to wet his claws with some Shadow Fiend blood. Perhaps the oil will spill soon. Kaiser needs to be very careful. It's very easy for Jurax to walk into the Creep Wave if you expect a Shadow Raze coming and then use the Spike Carapace to initiate the fight. And we, we do see the, the slight weakness of OG's draft. They're just not that good at pushing buildings. I mean, you got Eidolons, you got some PL Illusions, but they just don't do enough damage. And it's very easy for Kaiser to reset it with one raise. And yeah, Kaiser gives up the SMY plan. He's going to go straight into a BKB. I like this plan much more because I don't think SMY provides you enough. Um, and the BKB is very big necessity against the Nyx Assassin. SMY done, and like you said, BKB on the way. HR gonna make their first move with the Infest Bomb. Set so of course the top. Nitel waiting there. Nitel still doesn't have that first big item. He's pretty killable if this Fissure connects. Should be an opportunity. Echo coming through as well. Now the hook wow. with the Infest. Perfectly chain stun. He still manages to get over the Fissure. One more auto attack. Just barely able to kill him. That was closer than I would have expected, given the commitment. Yep. Meanwhile, uh, Kaiser, Spidey senses, just kind of walk around the map. He knows the ganks is going to be coming to him. A lot of heroes missing off the map, in particular Jurax. Already has the level 6 and hunting for the Shadow Fiend. How do you feel about Swift Ending's play so far? I mean, we already talked about Life Slayer. I don't think this is going to be the best ever Life Slayer game. Um, I think I, it's pretty terrible, actually. Ursa yeah. owns you 1v1. Lifestyle is not good against Illusion heroes unless he gets mega farmed with like a Mjolnir. He's going uh, back for a Midas. So he's not that good against PL, I would say. Uh, and then Enigma obviously owns him a Black Hole. So I think his job is that space creator and frontline tank. He also doesn't have that many infest vehicles. So He could rage and just kill the egg, I guess. That's something that he could look to do. Yeah, that's true. Uh, if he doesn't have Black Hole. So I think it is, like you said, a very tough life stealer game. And it is, to me, as far as the damage department goes, all the eggs in the Shadow Fiend basket, end of the day. Yep. But He, he could technically go into the Shaker once the Shaker has Blink, and the Shaker true. is 200 away. Yeah, that's a once every couple minutes type of move, but yeah, you, that is I mean, that, that is one way to deliver. In between him and Clockwork, I think uh, Hellraiser will have some options, but yeah, definitely a, a tough game. I, I just fear this team fight that comes, you know, 20 minutes in the game, and it just there's so many things that they have to hit: the egg, the black hole, and then of course all the PL stuff. Nyx assassin running in and out, Ursa. A any individual hero from OG isn't like very tanky that you can kill, but combined together, where you have to deal with everybody, I just don't think Hellraiser's got that damage. They are slowly losing the farm war here. OG now up to a 3,000 gold lead. So perhaps the Life Story Midas will help equalize things, but it's going to be a rather late Midas, all things considered. It's just kind of like the, the dream snare for Hellraisers, right, is that the Life Stealer is going around and infest bombs, they're finding Ice Blast kills, hookshot openings, and then Shadow Fiend's just following that up with a lot of farm and pushing objectives. But right. we haven't really seen that first part come to fruition, so... All of OG's Outer Tower stand, I think, like you were saying, they respect that OG team fight, but perhaps Respecting a little bit it too, too much, much. Yeah. so then they're never actually forcing what really matters, which is these towers surrounding the Roshan pit. Meanwhile, OG has made multiple forays onto the HR side of the base, many of them netting kills, taking down towers, getting deep wards that we see now, and that, that sets up the next round of offense. HR makes a smoke gank into the enemy jungle and not carrying enough detection. And J4 had a pair of sentries, but he was lagging a little bit behind. Nyx Assassin breaks the smoke, they get nothing out of it. And in fact, it's going to be OG, again, on, on an inferior pushing lineup, actually get getting to the buildings. Just hitting buildings. They're not going to get it, but good damage by the Siege unit. And back off to go. MVP right here. Little old Cardi. <laughs> I mean, if you're OG fan, you just got to be ecstatic with the pacing of the game. Again, you got Phoenix, who is about to pick up his level 10 talent. Sweet, sweet plus 20 experience gain for a 5 position support, amazing. S4 is rushing towards that level 15 where the 15% CDR is going to be amazing for Midas. And now, Ana goes right into the Roshan pit. He is going to be detected, but let's see if the Radiant can fight into it. 
Ice Blast coming in. This is an opening here. Gonna connect on another hook through. Milan immediately jumps out. I don't think he realized the Ursa was so low. He could have stuck around and secured the kill. A bit unfortunate. Roshan is not low enough, I don't think, where they could just come in and claim it. Wait. Meanwhile, Kaiser getting. How did that happen? Bottom by No Tail. Oh, he had Diffusal Blade. In fact, four charges of Diffusal Blade have been used, so must have been a pretty long chase. And HR, did nobody have a TP there? Or just got Well, they all walked down there yeah. to support the Roshan fight, yeah. right? I'm sure a couple people even pointed to the shrine. And now we got 33 carrying the package, but do they have detection? That's the question. Jirax scouts people out, and now he's going to hit them as Roshan drops low to prevent it. In fact, he's going to chase them all around. They're going to get Aegis. Uh, still sticking around. Oh, they want to go in, but they are not going to be able to in the end, so... Ouch, they lose their prize Shadow Fiend bottom. No tell likely going to take this tower too, unless there's an immediate response. And they lose the Roche fight and the Aegis now claimed by Ana. So you really could not have written a worse script for Hellraisers over that last two minutes. Yeah, you really can. They could have like either saved the Shadow Fiend, maybe had him there and tried to take the Roche fight, at least killed the Ursa. Literally nothing went right for them. And they wasted a bunch of time standing around the pit to no real great effect. He wanted to go for the solo kill set up here on Jerax. Swift ending had disengaged already. And now Ursa comes in, head full of steam with the DD rune. Uh -oh. Heading straight onto that lifestealer. Going to TP out. The hole is available, not even required. The claws are fresh with blood. And OG score another kill on a core. This is essentially the opposite of what you want out of this lifestealer pick. He should be going around with the clockwork, finding kills. The Shadow Fiend should be with the team, ideally not getting solo killed by the PL. And None of these things are happening. Yeah, what are you saying right now just is how the game is going as we have J4 escapes the gank. They have a lineup that thrives on going on the offensive, right? Ancient Apparition is not a support you want, just sitting there like pulling creeps. He, he wants to be having his allies going in and then ice blasting. You talked up you paint the scenario with the life slur and the shaker and the clockwork. They want to be fighting nonstop. But with the great rotations of OG, Jerax in particular has broken two smoke ganks so far has just given his team so much intel of what fights they want to take and not take. Yeah, he also set up that that 3v2 where they got the double kill early. Right. He managed to find his way past a ward that was in a really good position, hid in the trees, dodged the clockwork scouting for literally that exact movement, still somehow comes out and makes the play that opens up the laning stage and, you know, prevents the Shadow Frame from getting too out of control. So, yep. for me, Jerex definitely the big playmaker thus far is as seems to often be the case in this patch, like the four position players normally are really the stars of most of these teams, I would say. Sure. What ends up happening now is that OG has cores that could just solo kill on their own. You know, we saw PL killing the Shadow Fiend earlier. We know Ursa could definitely solo kill. Whereas HR, they kind of have to move in a predictable pattern of groups of three and four. And as a result, I, I just don't think they, they will be able to fight into OG the coming days. They're going to find no tell bottom lane. Can they focus him down? No echo. Swift ending. Oh, going nice in, micro. but baited by the illusion. Yep. No tell with the micro skills. Well, on the top lane. Action also breaking out. Milan taking the sun ray and not liking it so much. The battery assault doing okay damage on fly is going to usher him away, but he swoops in again. Keeps on engaging now. Tries for the TP out and Jerex and S4 got Ooh. baited away by J4. So he will make it back to safety. J4 unlikely to though. He will be the sacrifice. This is a very poor ancient apparition. Ice cream once again served up for a little dessert. I I don't see a way where our razor could actually come back unless OG starts to make some big mistake. It's like all about the shaker, right? You have to have a crazy echo. Yeah. Has he been even able to use an echo yet? There yes, was the he... one on top lane where he got off the, the great chain stun gank. But He's used that, it, but it has, we haven't had a big like team fight changing echo. Right. And I don't know that you will. Like, Looking at how OG's going to look to siege, they can put the Ursa with Aegis in front, hitting buildings, the Peel Illusion, maybe the Eidolons, but like, are the heroes actually going to be committing too much? I don't think so. 10 second BKB used to uh, dodge away from OG's Impale. And OG's fine with that. They, they lost nothing. Well, they're committed to taking this one longer. They are not going to be forcing fights when their life stealer just picked up a Midas at 22 minutes. I don't think that Midas is going to pay for itself. To be honest here, I, I think they're going to start losing the building right now. You think you see that Midas your OG, you're like, yeah, let's go fight. This is perfect. He's got 2,000 gold invested in something that does not help him take fights. Meanwhile, RPL 
has the Fusal Blade as well on his way to Ayasha as well. As it looks like top lane. J4, he's been found out here by Ana. Fisher comes through. Ice Blast connecting. Memory still got Aegis. Can they even finish him off? They got to hit this raise. Kaiser, he misses. Opportunity he blown blink out there. Now. Ana trying to blink out and will ultimately crack the Aegis. Now round two, revving up the Requiem. He gets pushed <laughs> away. Wow. Who's Jerex, force staff was that? that was Jerex? Jerex. Yeah, okay. To the rescue. J God. J God I indeed. Don't know that they wanted to go on the Ursa there anyway. Like if if they do hit that Requiem and then say Shaker blinks into Echo, all of a sudden like the Enigma comes in with a black hole and he's got BKB now, so there's nothing to stop that. Maybe a hook shot. Potentially you just give them two or three kills instead of just letting the Ursa walk away. But nonetheless, sick play by Jerex. I don't know if his allies would have wanted to stay and, and take that fight there. Uh, there's this tower there, the trees are going to make things annoying. And also Requiem dealing that much AoE damage would be annoying, so... I still think it was the, the good play for Jirax to disengage. It was definitely a good play. <laughs> Still no tier 1 down mid, huh? HR, no. They just were not able to achieve their goals this game. Yep. The goal is to kind of be annoying with uh, Clockwork and AA. In fact, it, it doesn't even, even feel even like the there's a clock. denied mid, so like, just nothing coming easy for Hellraisers. Yeah, I, I think PL is currently a problem that cannot be dealt with, and I just don't know whether that changes moving forward. There's not enough AoE on the side of Hellraiser. I mean, apart from that one magical Echo Slam that we keep dreaming about. That Echo Slam will come mid. Hookshot follows it up. Jerex is going to tank that Fissure. He did get off the oh, Carapace. Okay. The Ravage coming through. Three hero impale. See ya, Hellraisers. Now on the run for more. J4 trying to juke. He heads north, but Jerex has the scent. Oh, no, not quite. No teleport scroll. It's almost it's almost better for them if he's just forced to take I the mean, long road home because OG, they're taking the short direct path straight down the middle lane. Is Ana really searching for that AA kill? Does he actually care? Oh no, he's actually just going top for that. I think wave. you let him just run all the way top. Yeah. I mean, Meanwhile, maybe he ice blasts from there, but yeah, the base is under siege. Again, not exactly the quickest push, but the, when there's nobody defending. Nice force that forward here, and now oh. Kaiser in a lot of trouble. He could have activated his BKB, he doesn't, and now he finally does. That is the nine second charge down. The two best charges have already been blown on purely defensive maneuvers. Honestly, I just hope Jarek saves something for the main stage at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> he's pulling out all his tricks here in the groups. Uh, I wouldn't say he's pulling out all his tricks. I, I think this is actually his standard game. Let's not forget how good Jagod is. He's uh, a magician. The finest. I think Houdini might like to have a word. He's dead, right? <laughs> if he could, he would like to. <laughs> so, no words shall be had with Houdini. Well, if words were to be had with him, then that would probably mean that you have some really messed up powers. Alright, S4. Gonna find a kill. Another one bites the dust, quickly jumping onto the Shaker. Take him out, that is their comeback. Like, Shaker is the only way they get back Middle. in this game with a big blink echo. Jerex is there, Impale comes through, but Swift ending, dodging it with the rage. Now the hook onto No Tail, but he's just gonna simply doppelganger back to safety. Now the hole committed does reel in Kaiser. Somehow it even got J4. Didn't look like he was in the AoE. So that's three down. Lifestealer next on the list. The claws are gonna get to work on him, shredding him bit by bit, limb from limb. Four fall and OG. Continue to steamroll. I mean, we always knew that this lineup had the potential to go for a big Wombo combo play. 25 minutes in, we, we first saw it. I don't think you could even say that, hey, this is a drafting advantage or a drafting win for OG. I think they just played better. I would agree. Yeah, they we had some games yesterday where it's like LFY just out drafted Execration, and there's just no way they can win this game. Uh, I think that was in game two. Yeah, maybe it's game I can't remember. But uh, yeah, this is much more of an execution game. He'll bounce around, looks like he's stunned up. Echo Slam, okay, 33, making a play in his base, kills the Ursa. OG getting a little cocky here, diving for kills when they could just be hitting buildings. But I think they've got a few more of those to give. A lot more of those to give. Tier 2 is going to go down to S4 on top. 
so he is accelerating towards uh, level 18. You were mentioning that you know BKB is going to be an issue. Oh, it's online. He's actually going to have Octarine soon after. It's it's crazy how fast Enigma farms with this new build. Yep, with the Midas and the Talon. Skyzer is brought down here in the bottom lane again. Has the BKB defensively. X keeps on forcing those out. 33 wants to chase, maybe punish a little bit. The rocket comes in, but OG already on the retreat. All kinds of time being bought here while they wait for Ana's respawn, so... Absolutely no need to buy back. Still all Tier 2 standing for OG. Probably at least, I would say, two or three team fights would have to be thrown quite badly to get H HR back in this game. Yep. What's your throw counter, Evan? That's an accurate number? I hope so, so. Because one of the things that HR will also struggle with is that most of these team fights are going to be on probably in front of HR's base, right? And you know, you, you kill OG ones. What are you going to get a tier one? That's pretty much all the all you can get, really. So it, it's going to be hard for HR to now convert these throne fights, if you will, to actually any objective. That's if if OG even throws at all. I, I don't think they will. I think their lineup's actually a relatively safe one. Ana is really the only one that could Rambo, and he did just now, but it's just the one kill, so... Very sure getting peppered here by no -tail coming in again with the illusions getting to work. Throws up the Diffusal Blade charge. Very almost dead now. A follow-up volley of illusions. Will he fall just to those? Barely survives. He's out, but that opens the way for Roshan. With no Shaker, there is no chance to contest, and by the time they could even get here... Rock is dead. Yep, Aegis and Cheese gets picked up. Looks like Ursa might just hold the Cheese. Are we gonna see a high ground siege? I, I think they could just like, you know, go mid now. That tower is very low already. I definitely think you do. Maybe they split up the PL uh, and the Ursa here. So PL can be kind of ratting away on the top side of the map. You send the, the main host towards mid. You could do the same thing with the Eidolons, but I definitely think we're at the point where OG it's going to be chipping, looking for a tier 3, looking for a lane of Rax. At a bare minimum, you want to get a tier 3 and take the shrines down. Ideally, I think one lane of Rax is a realistic goal at this point in the game. Yeah, and for Hellraiser, they need to take the team fight not in their base. I think they need to smoke and wrap around from behind. Get Enigma first, get the Phoenix, because I don't think they could actually even have hope of winning a team fight if either of those ults go off successfully. And then just use the power of the Shaker, the burst of the Shadowfiend Requiem, and, and just hope for the best. Jerex on the Prowl again. A little surprise might be awaiting him, though. He's going to work through the trees, but 33 with the casual enchant. Toto Jerex is like, hey, 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 hey something over away. here, man. Maleficent comes through. Lifestealer's packed inside as well. The hole is wound up. See ya, boys. Maybe not. Hookshot coming in. Milan looking for the turnaround, but the cogs keep him away from that Enigma. And now he gets bashed by Ana. He's brought down as well. Oh, even Milan is finished off. Three collapses. OG spring the trap. It couldn't have been more unfortunate. He just wanted the enchant totem damage in preparation for a fight. I don't even know that Jerex was going to check that next corner. But certainly after that totem, he was. The funny thing is that the spike carapace stunned the life slayer as he popped out. I don't think I've ever seen that. But as a result, set up for the beautiful two man in black hole. And sure, the clockwork canceled it. But I think the, the one and a half second was more than enough. And. They just walk over the base. They're also standing in the Midnight Pulse there as well, so it's a lot of extra damage. Aghanim's now complete on Ana. Not that I think he needs it, but finally OG. They'll take that first lane. Almost Fissure blocking Ana inside the base, but not quite able to do so. Jerax is still in, in the base as well. <laughs> He's looking for his Ravage again. Definitely an opportunity here. They get too far away. Maybe you don't get the whole team, but picking off one or two could be sweet. Mid lane also being pressured. OG, a full court press now as they close in on a game one victory. This would put them at five and two. Certainly en route to a top four finish in the group. And this is the goal. Anything else is just icing on the cake, really. As far as the TI format goes, is on a find his opening. Jumps in, kills off Milan. Simultaneously, though, real damage. This tier three being pressured. Illusions constantly picking away at it. HR are scrambling to defend. 33 looking for that miracle echo. 
Auto might come in again. He blinks forward. He leaps in. Finds Swift ending. Does get controlled for the moment. Can they finish him off? He still has Aegis. He still has Cheese. It's got to be two, three kills to actually bring him down realistically. And Kaiser, almost out of mana. Space created as now the melee racks opened up. On a backs off, focusing on the real prize. 33 does have that echo ready, but OG are just positioning well. Sitting back with the supports. They still have the Phoenix Egg. If duty calls, Jarex is also there to interrupt the combo. The echo comes in. He really only hits the creeps. No tail just walks away casually. Hey, juking out hey. of it. G freaking G egg. Combined with the whole OG. Just on another level from Hellraisers in this game one. Yep, look at how safe that the last game ending push was. You know, it was just like the PL darting in and out with illusions, Ursa hitting, we got Eidolons hitting. Ultimate safety push. And Hellraiser forced to act. They couldn't get a good echo, and that's all she wrote. But like we said earlier, this is pretty much a, a straight up outplay for OG, flexing their muscles, trouncing on these qualifier teams. Yeah, definitely hat off to Jerax. So many, uh, you can make a highlight reel out of this game alone, let alone what he's done uh, the last six months on this team. So. Zero, zero, 15. Beautiful and, score. and a selfless yeah. scoreboard for him as well. So guys, thank you for joining us. I'm LD, he's Lumi. We'll be back for game two as Hellraiser struggles to get some wins on the board. Stick around.